My name is Nathan Long, and I'm both the old guy and the new kid on Torment Tides of Numenera. Old in the sense that I'm, well, old. I'm older than most of the other guys on the project. Also in the sense that I've been a writer for quite a long time. I moved to Hollywood in 1988, made two movies, wrote a buttload of TV scripts, and found out after 20 less than pleasant years that I'd rather be writing novels. Pursuing that dream, I've written 11 Warhammer novels, including five books in the iconic Gotrick and Felix series, and just last year debuted my first original sci-fi novels, Jane Carver of War and the sequel, Swords of War. But as far as computer games go, I really am the new kid. Torment is only the second game I've ever worked on, the first being Wasteland 2. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be in... Oh. Hang on. Ah, right. So, Colin talked to you about the themes of Torment and how they apply to the Bloom, the area that we're going to flesh out in this video series. Adam spoke about the tides and their effect on the world around you. George talked about the setting of the Bloom, and Moore talked to you about how your character's actions affect your companions. What I'm supposed to do is take all those separate bits and pieces and show you how we weave them together into a cohesive story. Okay, what do we got? Theme. As Colin said, the themes of Torment are legacy, abandonment, and mystery. So I got to put together a story that reflects at least one, and hopefully more than one, of those themes. So far, so good. The Tides. The Tides are a tangible manifestation of the consequences of your character's actions. I can work with that. Good stories are always about consequence. Setting. For a setting, we've got the Bloom, an interdimensional slum, a hidey hole for criminals wanted on many worlds, and a trap for people who came here by accident and can't find a way out again. Perfect. Just like Hollywood. I can write what I know. Main character. For a main character, we've got a lost soul searching for answers to who he is and what he could be, and desperate enough to escape the fate that's breathing down the back of his neck that he might be willing to do anything to avoid it. I like it. Desperation makes for great stories. And Adam's already given me a cool basic scene to play with, a chance meeting between your character, some men of flexible morals, and a race called the Stika deep in a mine underneath the bloom. Companions. For your main character's companions, we've got, well, you could have any number of pals. Torment will give you plenty to play with. But for now, let's go with the one that we've already revealed, the cold, calculating Jack a cunning, amoral drifter who keeps her motives to herself. Okay, that's everything, right? Good. So I thought, just for fun, that I'd take all those elements and put them together on the fly in real time and come up with a story while you watch. Ready? Great. Let's do it. No. Ah. Oh. No, that wouldn't work. Why did I ever think I could be a writer? Ha! Okay. I've got it. Now, coming up with stories for your main character is a little tricky in a game like Torment, since you're actually going to be the one writing the story. All we can do is provide you with situations to react to and try our best to allow for all the possible decisions you might make. What we can do, however, is make the stories of the people around you as compelling as possible and make you the one with the power to decide how those stories end. On top of that, we can put those people into conflict with one another so that you will always be forced to make hard decisions about who you help and who you hurt. So, story one, the men of flexible morals. Seems simple enough on the surface, they're going into the old mine to harvest Stika stones, which, when ground into a fine powder, are a powerful aphrodisiac that rich men will pay a fortune for. The problem is, Stika stones aren't stones. They're Stika eggs. So these guys are heartless murderers preying on another race's young, right? Well, yes and no. They were honest men once, 
tricked into entering the bloom through a one-way portal by greedy jerks who wanted their land. And they are now unable to return home. Recently, though, they found a nano who says she can get them back, but only for a staggering amount of money. So, Stika stones. On to story two, the Stika. They seem pretty straightforward, too. Innocent creatures defending their young, right? Problem is, they're just as insensitive to humans as we are to them. Their constant burrowing is undermining the streets and buildings in the bloom, and they're in danger of catastrophic collapse. Hell, maybe some of those buildings are orphanages if we really want to pile on the pathos. The Stika will survive, they'll just dig deeper, but they feel no responsibility for the safety of the city. Unless they can be convinced to change their ways, the people above them are doomed. Then, story three, the cold calculating Jack. Though she says she's just along for the ride, the Jack has her own reasons for entering the mine. She's in trouble with a powerful Bloom gang lord and wants him to die in a way that can't be traced back to her. So she's planning to trick the Stika into undermining the gang lord's house by telling them he has a Stika queen egg hidden there. A lie, of course. And finally, there's your story. There could be any number of reasons you've come to the mine. You could be looking for a portal to another world in order to escape what's hunting you, or someone who claims to have knowledge of your heritage could have asked you to retrieve a Stika egg as part of a scheme to track down your creator, or you could be helping the Jack because the gang lord owns a book that will reveal answers to the questions of your forgotten life. What a tangle, huh? But that's what makes it fun and challenging. Do you help the Jack by saving the Stika, or do you betray her and wipe out the Stika to save the city? Do you drive off the men of flexible morals to protect the Stika's eggs, or do you help the men steal the eggs so that they can get back to their home world? Is there any way to help everybody without hurting anybody, or do you just kill everyone in a single-minded pursuit of your own goals? I've got no idea. I'm not telling that story. You are. So, what are the game systems that allow you to tell that story, to fight or talk or trick your way through the situations you encounter? I don't know that either. I'm just the writer, but I know a guy who does. Before I go, I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for contributing to the Torment Tides of Numenera Kickstarter. Planescape Torment was the game that made me want to write games. Its depth and heart and heartbreak moved me like no game before or since. And to be allowed to work on its spiritual successor with some of the people who made my favorite game, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. But none of it would have been possible without you. Without your contributions to the Kickstarter, there would be no game to work on, and I would never have had the chance to be part of the next great experiment in how good and how deep and broad a computer RPG can be. Thank you. I owe you all.